Hey everyone, how's it going? Uh, so I had a viewer leave a comment that said, or uh, asked if I could start doing uh, aluminum videos on the different types of aluminum that we take. This is something I've been wanting to do for a while, and uh, I'm just thinking like, man, I'm gonna have to break this down into sections or something, uh, because there's so much to cover when it comes to aluminum. And I've watched a lot of other videos uh, on YouTube, some of them for actual scrap yards, which is pretty embarrassing. Um, but they're not very helpful at all in my opinion and I wouldn't put my name on it. So today we're going to be talking about 6063 aluminum and 6061 aluminum. That's what we're going to be going over. So I hope you learned something. It's going to be a long video. So if you're not here to learn about scrapping 6061 and 6063 aluminum, then you should probably watch another video. All right, let's start from the beginning. So a lot of people don't realize this, but there's not just one type of aluminum. There's many, many, many different variations of aluminum. And today we're going to be talking about two of them that are in the 6000 series category, 6063 and 6061 aluminum. Because all aluminum is made of uh, different chemistries that makes them unique and special in their own little way, just like us. So these uh, type of items are, are mainly used uh, for structural purposes when you need a lot of strength and you need to use aluminum because you know aluminum is very corrosion resistant things like that sometimes you need to use it for certain applications so they both have extremely well workability uh, weldability you can weld to them very easily nice um, there's many good characteristics of uh, why they choose to use these items the 6061 and 6063 aluminums, why I chose to do them first, is because these items in a scrap yard are going to be more on your uh, higher end uh, dollar, dollar wise, dollar amount, uh, when it comes to the aluminum side of things in a scrap yard. So these are going to be worth more money than uh, the majority of your other aluminums. So. Now we're just going to talk about this piece of 6063. So 6063, which I'm going to show you a lot more examples in this video. But here you go. You have the, the majority of the time there are going to be window frames and door frames uh, because you know 6063 is uh, it's architecturally designed for window trim and doors and uh, door construction everything like that. So most of the time it's just going to be, this This is part of a window frame or door frame. So I'll go into the different categories uh, that different scrapyards buy them and sell them as. So the 6063 aluminum uh, is really architecturally designed for trim, window, uh, and door construction, and that's pretty much, I mean, almost all of the 6063 uh, is going to be window frames, door frames, stuff like that. This is part of a window frame or door frame. All right, so I know a lot of you are most likely saying, well, Hunter, how do I find, uh, how can I tell the difference between the 63 and the 61? Well, uh, the first first way you can is with a gun, but nobody has one of these except for scrap yards, and they're really expensive. This is a really old one, um, but if you shoot it, uh, and I would show you if somebody that brought the gun from my other scrap yard would have brought the charger with it, then uh, you know I could have showed you how it works. But anyways, you'll shoot it, and it'll tell you what type of aluminum it is, and it'll even give you all the chemistries that are inside the aluminum. So. That doesn't even make practical sense for us. We can't sit there and shoot. We buy thousands and thousands of pounds of this stuff every day. So we can't sit there and shoot everybody's aluminum, every single piece of aluminum and, and metal to see what it is. So the, the way we counteract that is because we don't have time. So the way we counteract it is we buy based off of characteristics. So if you look at this, we obviously know that all the door frames and window frames are going to be 6063, but you can see how it was extruded through a machine. I mean, all this stuff that you see, it got pushed through a machine and it made it 
this way and gave it that design that you see. You see all these. But if it's a door frame, window frame, we know it's going to be 60-63. It gets a little bit trickier, um, which I'll explain later. Because, well, I'll explain that later. So let's go through a couple different pieces. We'll start with the bear. You remember every scrapyard is different. Every scrapyard categorizes things differently. It just depends on how they buy and sell and how much material they get, how fast they can move it and everything like that. Because, you know, this is obviously going to pay the best because it has no paint, uh, no non-conformities on it, no non-metallics, uh, no iron or anything. So it's bare. Bare 6063 extrusion is what this is called. Some scrapyards aren't going to buy it as bare 6063 extrusion. They might not make that package. Um, but you do get a premium if you're uh, selling to a primary mill. And like I said, some scrapyards do it, some do not. So that just depends on where you go. This is just another piece of bare. I'll get rid of some of this stuff so it frips a room on my little table here. All right, and then next you're going to have painted, painted 6063. So I've showed this piece already a bunch of times, and pretty much the same thing as the other one, except it has paint on it. Same thing here, just trying to give you uh, a couple pieces to look at. So this is painted 6063. Again, it's clean, meaning it has no iron on it. Now this is going to go with the paint in 6063 as well. Try to see if I can get a shot of it. But you can see it was extruded through a machine, just like the other ones, to make a window frame or door frame. But this is anodized. So you can see it has that shiny, you might be able to see me. Uh, this is anodized and this is going to go with the paint in. This one as well. This is also anodized. A lot of people get confused because they throw this in with the bare 6063, and then you know we have to tell them, hey, that can't go in there because it's anodized. You know. This is a heat sink out of a computer, but you can actually throw this with your bare 6063. And it brings a premium price over the paint in 6063. That's all it is, is bare 6063 extrusion. Sits right on top of the processor. And then you have your dirty. You have two pieces of dirty. When we say dirty, we're not talking about all this dirt. In the scrap business, anything that we say uh, is dirty, we're talking about iron. And it could be other nonconformities like this one. I'll get to that in a second. So, when you look at this one, it has iron screws on there. So, if it has iron screws on it, it's going to go in the dirty. Now, a lot of people say, well, should I clean it? I know some uh, customers sit there and clean every screw out of it. Uh, in my opinion, I really just don't think it's that worth it. If you have a whole lot of it, it's always a better way to get a price and you can just save yourself the time. Uh, if you go to a scrapyard, that'll, that'll pay you decent. You're obviously not going to get as much as clean, but uh, depending on the scrapyard, how they sell it, where they sell it, when they sell it, and all that uh, will depend if they can get you close enough to where it makes it not worth your time. And again... I don't know if I showed that well enough, but stick on there. I always use a hanging magnet. Because a lot of times if you're checking like uh, for steel and stainless steel, like screws, a lot of times I use a hanging magnet because if it doesn't stick with it and move with it, then you know it's just another stainless screw and you don't need to worry about taking it out. Now the reason this one is dirty is because it has what's called thermal break in it. It's a piece of plastic that runs in here. And you'll see uh, thermal break. You'll even see 
on some of these larger pieces like this, a lot of times it'll be running right down the middle. And that piece of plastic, it, it's a non-metallic and they're not looking for that when they melt stuff down. And even when you have um, irony extrusion, dirty extrusion, whatever you want to call it, uh, a lot of times, depending on the mill, they're usually, they might be making a product that requires just a small amount of iron to be in it. And uh, it might actually be a really good product for them. But thermal break is just plastic. Uh, I don't think I can get a good angle on it. Maybe I can. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that or not. Just see the little plastic piece. It runs in between. So that's going to go in the dirt as well. That was loud. So real quick, we'll go uh, one more time from top to bottom. You have your Bear 6063. Not all scrapyards have these packages. Uh, some of them might just have two, clean and dirty. But they, you can sell these items as these, as these that I'm about to list. So you have your, your Bear 6063. You also have like new production 6063, which is pretty much the same thing. Um, and then you're going to have painted 6063. You're going to have painted 63. A lot of scrap yards allow 2% iron uh, when we sell it. Uh, some people allow 2% iron. Uh, some buyers at 5% iron. It just depends on the price that they have really. It's like all my videos that I explain. Don't worry about what they're calling it worry about the price because if you go to one scrap yard and they're like oh yeah you know that's painting 6063 that you have and you're like man this stuff is bare like can't you pay me more and, no this is our price well if that's their price and it's higher than the other guy across town who, who buys it separately uh then obviously go with the guy that pays more doesn't matter if he's calling it Bear 63, New Production 63, Dirty 63. It doesn't matter if he's calling it dirty. If he's calling it dirty, he pays more than the other guy that is buying it as clean. Uh, obviously, you want to use him. Just make sure, like I always say, that they have good, accurate scales that are working. <clears throat> um, so you also have scrapyard cell package called a 1010 package, which is 10% painted and 10% 6061. So they can actually have 6061 in their 6063. And uh, generally speaking, the 6063 is always going to be worth more money than 6061. Um, not always. Uh, I have seen it before. The 61 is worth more. And, and also, it's so many situation dictates. Um, because there might just be a mill that really needs 61 real bad. Uh, it just all depends. And then obviously, I don't know if I already said it, but you have dirty. Dirty 6063. Some people call it secondary 6063. Some people call it irony 6063. Some people call it dirty 6063. On and on and on. Again, names don't matter. It's just a price. All right, now we're going to get into the 6061. So one of the best ways and easiest ways, but it doesn't happen every time, but one of the easiest ways to tell the difference between 61 and 63, it's a lot of times it's written right on it. And that's the easiest thing to sell. So what you should probably do is buy yourself one of these stamping machines that can write on metal and just write 63 on all of it, right? No, I don't suggest it. <laughs> so anyways, um, 6061 is going to be more items that are, you know, like cylinder shaped, uh, you know, pipe, aluminum pipe. This one's a good one because uh, a lot of times they, they'll thread 6061 because it holds up pretty good. So get rid of those. And, you know, so 6061 extrusion, it's going to be the pipe I just showed you, angle, aluminum angle, pretty self-explanatory, it's an angle. Square tubing. 
pretty easy. You're going to have plate, 6061 plate. Uh, most people throw all the sheet plate clip uh, into one category, and this is actually sheet, 6061 sheet. This is going to be more like your plate. You can tell it's a lot, it's a lot thicker, but most people just have it in one category. And, you know, a lot of people throw all this in one category. Some have like a bare plate, painted plate. And a lot of times, uh, a really good way to be able to tell that it's 6061, I mean, this is a solid piece. So, you know, this is going to go in 6061 solids. Uh, you know, there's holes drilled in it, and there's also, uh, right here, it's tapped out so that you can put a screw in there. Uh, you know, this is obviously used to structurally hold something up. And a lot of these pieces are machined at, like, a tool and die shop, a CNC machine, or, or whatnot. Um, you know, you can tell this is just a thick piece of 6061. And it was all milled inside of a machine. They had to use a machine to mill all this stuff out. It's a really easy way to, to tell what it is. So this is going 6061 solids. You know, these are your punchings. Probably from a big sheet or big plate. Those are 6061. And, you know, the best thing to do is just to put your eyes on more and more material and visually... Uh, look at the physical characteristics because like I said earlier we have to buy on physical characteristics a lot of times because we can't shoot every piece uh, so this could be a piece of sheet plate clip whatever you want to call it this is another piece of square tubing now same thing you have 6061 bare extrusion 6061 painted extrusion you have sheet plate clip, uh, you have solids, uh, you even have a different category for 18 wheeler uh, rims, you know, they're 6061 truck wheels, uh, they have to be separated by themselves. So you have all these different types and you just depending on the yard you go to is going to depend on how far they break them down. Uh, a lot of it comes down to, you know, some yards might just mix everything together because they it might take them forever to make a bale of bare 6061 now this looks like bare 6061 but because it has so much paint that got dripped on it it's probably gonna have to go in the paint in 6061 and there's also this film residue of, of paint or some something that they put on it that i can feel with my hands you probably can't see it in the camera So, a lot of these items are 6061, well, they all are, and, uh, you know, hopefully I can put some pictures up in between a lot of this stuff to give you better visualization that might help you understand a little more about it. So, next clip. Uh, one more thing before I stop talking about 6061 is uh, another easy way, if the piece that you have has a weld on it, like here, it's actually, a lot of times it's a really easy way to sort things out. It doesn't always work, but um, it's an easy way to, to be able to tell the difference if you look for any welds on it. Because you can see that weld's real clean and nice looking and doesn't have a weird tint to it or anything like that. So, I have a piece of stainless that's going to sneak into this video. And I'm going to show you the difference in the welds. So, you can tell that this piece of stainless right here. The welds on it have this tint to it. It's pretty distinct versus the welds that are on this piece of 6061 aluminum. And I think there's another weld down here. Might give a good shot. But you can tell the difference. So a lot of times that's really the easiest way because a lot of I'll, I'll make another video on that. But uh, people are always like, hey, how do I tell the difference between stainless and aluminum? There's lots of different ways, but that is one way. Just another piece of useful information all right so i decided to throw this in uh into the mix 
So this is uh, where some confusion can start happening and people's uh, blood starts boiling and things like that. And here's how we can kind of try to avoid that maybe. So after everything I just showed you, this piece right here, you would assume that it would most likely be 60-61. And you can see where I scratched it, shot it with a gun. So it's actually 60-63 aluminum and it kind of defies everything that I just went over. No. Welcome to the scrap business. <clears throat> so this piece is 6063 as well, right? So a lot of times uh, these pieces will come in together. This one will obviously be the same color as this one, but they'll come in together because they're made for the same application, right? But if you just had this right here, like I said, we have to buy off of characteristics. And I mean, this thing has the characteristics of 6061. And even though I know it's 6063, I have to find someone that's going to buy it at 6063, unless I make a 1010 package, like I was talking about earlier, where I'm allowed to have 10% 61 in there. Because even though this isn't 61, the buyer is going to buy it off of the characteristics of a 6061, and that's what he's going to assume it is. So you just throw it in there. But if you're a customer and you have this item right here, and you come in and you say, hey, this is really 6063. You got to pay me for 6063 aluminum. And I'm going to be like, man, you have 10 pounds. Or most scrappers are going to be like, man, you got 10 pounds. I ain't, I ain't going to buy that 63. That's 61, man. So anyways, uh, the way you can try to get more money out of it is if you, you, see, you need to save up enough to make at least a bell. And this goes with any material you sell to a scrapyard, if it's something different or oddball or weird or whatever. Uh, you need to have at least enough to fill up a box or, or make a bell. And that way the scrapyard can sell it because if it's some weird item, they don't want to sit on it forever. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've gone over that in other videos. So if you came and you said, man, it's 60, 60, here's the right way to go about it. You go in the scrapyard and you say, hey, I know this has the characteristics of 6061, but uh, I know it's 6063. Would you mind shooting it with a gun if you have a gun, uh, just to make sure? And even if they do have a gun and they can shoot it, uh, there's a possibility they might go, man, we, we just don't sell it that way, you know? Uh, you're just going to either have to accept that and see what their price is, and if it's better than everyone else, you sell it for whatever they call it. And if it's not, you can go to the next scrapyard and ask them if they'll buy it that way. But uh, unless you have a whole lot of it, they usually are not going to take the time uh, to go out of the way to do it. On the other hand, like in my yard, and I used to, that was my job as a scale buyer, uh, buyer on the scale. Um, I'd probably just do it just to keep the customer happy. If they only had 10 pounds, not going to break the bank. Uh, just be like, yeah, sure, 663, whatever you want, dude. So, uh, but for some reason, uh, scrapyards seem very defensive sometimes. Uh, but if you just go in there demanding that you get paid for it, uh, they're probably not going to be as willing to help you out on a price. So, so a perfect example of kind of what I'm talking about, this isn't the same dimensions or anything by any means, but... Uh, the square tubing aspect of it is what I'm after. So this square tubing right here, uh, way back in the day, uh, I don't know if anyone was in the military. and uh, I know I spent many nights when I was in the Marine Corps on, on the cots that they made, and uh, they sure were hard to put together. Uh, but either way, they're made out of 6063 aluminum, but they look just like this piece of 6061 aluminum. And they actually made a lot of those right here in San Antonio. And uh, we used to have a contract with that company and, you know, they were telling us, no, there's 6063 aluminum. We know because that's how we order them. And so we shot them with a gun and sure enough, they were 6063. Now, here's the hard part because we have to find a buyer or mill or what, what, whoever to buy these things as 6063. When they're doing the same thing we are, we're, they're just buying off the characteristics, you know, it has the uh, characteristics of a 6061 because 95 percent of the time it is going to be a 6061 so, but since we generated so much of it uh, we were actually 
able to get and provided paperwork and documentation for it, but we were able to get a 6063 price for it. So that's just kind of an example of what I mean when you have a kind of an oddball item. All right, so uh, I hope this video helped explain uh, the differences between 6063 and 6061 aluminum. Uh, my next video, I'll probably hit up a diff couple different types of aluminum. Uh, that one just had a lot of detail to go through and it's probably something I missed, uh, but I think it's a little bit better than what else is out there. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or you want to tell me I'm wrong or give me a thumbs down or whatever, just uh, leave a comment and I'll try to tackle that, that problem.